Our scripture reading today comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Hear now the word of the Lord. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Sosthenes. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, Together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched by him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
And this church, this Corinthian church, sanctified saints? No. But they live in this in between, where the cross has brought an evil to the end of division, greed, and pride. And the power of God and the Holy Spirit has broken in. But as it says in verse 7 and 8 of our passage, the Corinthian church is still waiting for the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's come, but it's not complete. The old way is still here. It has not yet passed away. The church, sometimes, if we're honest, is less than lovely. Not only that, but we fail to live up to our calling and our mission in the world to be a sign, instrument, and foretaste of the love of God. To be a living representative of this new community that's characterized by self-sacrificial love. Not only within our walls, but outside of it. We don't always embody this alternate life. Sometimes we too disappoint. Yet in the midst of a world that is divisive, broken, and painful, a world that sets persons against persons for matters of race, sexuality, financial mobility, or national status, the Corinthian church and us are called saints. We're called sanctified. Sanctification and being saints, this living into our calling, all of this happens because of the grace of God, lovingly given and perpetually with us through the Holy Spirit. We are never without what we need. As verse 5 says, in every way we are enriched in the grace of God given to us through Jesus Christ. We have all that we need to be this alternate world. Though the Corinthian church is not living into their identity as a witness to the love of God that reshapes their community, Paul believes this, and he still calls them back to who they really are, calls them back to their true identity. You are the church, the church of God, sanctified in Jesus Christ, saints. Some of us think here sanctification and just think behavior modification. <laughs> It's just about, like, you know, doing it right. Come on. Put some effort in. Kind of make the right choice. But sanctification is so much more than that. The vision of sanctification that John and Charles Wesley offered to us in the Wesleyan Methodist movement, um, it's not a work that we do, but it's a work that God does. With unmerited grace, we don't know why, but God just really thinks that we're worth it. God is still willing to do that work in us. It's a work of grace that God does in our hearts that's happening even when we're unaware of it. Sanctification is the work of God's radical grace to free us from outward sin. It's the work of grace to change the bent of our hearts from being inward focused, focused on ourselves, our needs, our self-protection, our own preservation, and changing the bent of our hearts to be out towards God, in love of God and love of neighbor. It's to change our hearts in self-sacrificing love. Will Willimon, a Methodist theologian, says, to be made perfect from a Wesleyan perspective is to be caught up so completely in the life of the Holy Spirit that you're not burdened by constant self-doubt. To be sanctified is to be drawn into a way of life so compelling that our worry that we may not be doing enough for God is lost. The saints never try to be saints. It just turns out that way by the gift of God. And though will not make sanctified, but they kind of sound like a happy accident. We know that it's not. Because I don't know about you, but I don't wake up each day wanting the things of God. I don't wake up in the morning ready to love my neighbor or give of myself so that they can be 
change, to love the things that God loves? Do we want the Spirit to sow in us the fruit of a life spent with God? Fruits of love, joy, and peace, lives of mercy, justice, and humility. But there are people in the world who are desperate for your sanctification, who need your sanctified life. In a weary world that's battered by divisiveness and pride and greed, there are people in your homes and in your workplaces who are wondering if there's any other way to live but that way. And they need your sanctified life. Your example of sacrificial love. God's not content with only saving us from our individual sins. But God is hell-bent on changing our world. Through you, through me, through the church. God is intent on making us the good news to the world. And we have been enriched in every way. We have all the grace that we need to live a life of sacrificial love. The question is not, will God sanctify us? God already has and is. The question is, will we let ourselves hope, trust, and believe that God is really doing this in our life and wants to even more? And some of us don't believe that sanctification is possible because, let's be honest, we don't really have very many examples. But perhaps we should let God decide what's possible or impossible. Perhaps our response to 